I'm back. Everybody thought I died last week, right? Nope. I'm still here. Um, I missed last week. Sorry, guys. Uh, thanks for Matt and Eric for jumping in and covering for me. It was just one of those weeks I couldn't couldn't get here. Um, that may happen more and more from time to time. I think Matt mentioned that last week. It's just like ALS is uh, a thing and it, it can be unpredictable and things can happen. But, you know, that's the danger of doing a live show with somebody who's dying out loud, <laughs> such as it is. But thanks to everyone um, who covered for me, like I said, and those of you who responded to our um, two weeks ago and last week, Matt mentioned it again, um, trying to increase our Patreon support. It really, you guys really responded. And um, thank you to all the new patrons. We appreciate everything you're doing and, and um, how much it's helping, you know, these expenses, the caregiving expenses and stuff that's going to only increase, like modifying the house and uh, eventually getting a wheelchair van, those kind of things. It's just going to take money. And, um, you know, I appreciate those of you who come around us and want to be a part of that and what it feels like to me is you're saying we appreciate what you're doing, Dave. Um, we value your input in this community and we want to partner with you in that because it feels like that's what you're doing. You know, the, that you helping us do these kind of shows and the other things we're doing is you being a part, a partner with us. So it's, it's greatly appreciated. And um, we, we need more, always need more. <laughs> Not, again, like Jimmy and I said when we first did this, it's a limited time need. But at right now, it is a need and it's going to increase. So if you haven't had a chance to participate in that and want to, we do appreciate it. So thank you again for all of you who stepped up and those of you who continue to step up. It means everything. It means the world. So... I, you know, when I was a Christian, I used to not say it means the world because the world was evil. And we, um, you know, you, do, you love not the world and the things thereof. And my guest, by the way, who's is going to understand that language very well. You know her. You love her apostasy. Um, welcome back to Dying Out Loud on the line. Thank you so much for having me again. <laughs> it's always Please nice say. to spend time with you. Always. You're such a cheerful person and I always love hanging out with you whenever I get the chance to. But do, do people say apostasy or do they pay, say apostasy? <laughs> you can just, I don't know. It, I thought it was just a clever, catchy play on it is, the word. Apostasy. No, but everyone says it either not correct, but I don't care. You can just call me Stacy. Well, yeah, I yeah. love, no, I think it's a great play on, on that. Um, it's the word apostasy. Yeah. But so, I've been called Apo Stacy, and I'm like, no, that's yeah. not really anything to do yeah. with. <laughs> You're making it harder than it is, kind of thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 But that's okay. um, we got we got lines open. I uh, want to hear from you tonight. 720 619 2288. Call Dying Out Loud on the line. You've got the web link down there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, st st we're going to talk with Stacy off and on between calls and before calls about deconversion and about that whole journey of coming out of faith. I'd love, we would love to hear from you. Um, if you've shared a similar journey and, and you want to talk about that tonight on the show, this, you know, mm -hmm. or if you are someone who's not um, left your faith and still in your faith, I would love to hear why. Um, yeah. You know, what, what are your main reasons for believing and continuing to believe and, you know, if that's you, don't don't lurk in the chat. Come on, uh, be an adult and let's call in and talk to us. We're we're nice. Uh, Stacy's exactly. one of the nice, nicest angry <laughs> agents out there. So <laughs> we would love to hear from you. So call us tonight. We want to we want to have a conversation with you. But I was thinking about I mean, we've talked a lot. Of, you know, you've been oh, on yeah. my show on yours. We've gotten to know each other virtually. Um, mm -hmm. And when you hear apostasy, back when you were, you know, I, I mentioned that joke mm -hmm. about being in the world and, you know, had worldly, you remember in terms of worldly music and worldly activities. Secular. And yep. Secular. Yeah. So what does the word apostasy engender in you? What does that make you think of? 
if, if you could put Just, your old Christian hat back on. Oh, if I was putting my old Christian hat back on, it would yeah. have been that the worst thing you could have been called. Um, I think apostate. being an apostate. Yeah. What does it and mean? How would you have it just means it? someone back then I would have defined it as someone who just completely turned their back on God, knowing they were turning their back on God and mm -hmm. doing it spitefully. That's what I would have summed it up as. Um so the the how I I mean how I got the name was um someone posted something about apostasy and just how it is the worst thing that you could do is to separate yourself from God. Yeah, and I yeah. was like, yeah. And I saw that and I was like, in a way I was, I thought it was someone that I was really close to. And it was soon after I had left religion. And when they posted it, I was like, I almost feel like they were posting it in a in reference to what I had just recently done. And I was kind of like, Oh, that sort of sounds like my name. So I'm going to just take what they were doing and just add my spelling to it. And I'm going to just claim that title because, yeah, I'm an apostate now. So, yeah, you rather than it. taking it, I did. Yeah. I embraced it. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, why not? <laughs> well, um, I, I understand. I don't know if we've talked about this before here, but I think we have other places. But from my understanding, when you left your church, they began, the pastor began to preach sermons about you. Yeah. As, as an apostate. I mean, how did, do you, did you ever hear them? Did you know what they were about? Oh yeah. I, I tuned in cause I'm really oh, yeah. nosy <laughs> and well, I want to know what, what people are saying. What was the gist of what he was saying? Um, yeah. Okay, what is what's the book that Alice Gretchen wrote? What's the name of that book again? Oh, Wayward. Wayward. Yeah. So he. Yeah. He, I'm sorry. He I'm referred to us. Push it back just a little bit. That's okay. No, turn it. I, I'm turning um, right side. We have to do stuff like this because I can't do it myself. We haven't self. It's okay. It goes off center a little bit more. All good. Yeah. Oh, wait. No. Technical. Okay. All right. Okay. So I think you look your perfect. Your pastor was saying what? Did he call you by name, by the way? He did. Yeah. The first, um, the first couple services, um, mm -hmm. he did, he did refer to us by our first and last names. Um, and then when I kind of, um, he, I posted about it and everyone would come to my social media to see that I had saw it. And I was like, I was very upset about it. Um, so then he ended up changing, calling us to the wayward family. So rather than calling us the wayward family, the wayward family. So rather than calling us by name each time, he would just refer to us as the wayward family. Raisins. So. <laughs> Where you this, just turning it comfortable. I'm abandoning all pretense of doing this behind the scenes. Hello, it's everyone. all good. Raise it. I need it raised. I'm trying to raise it. It's, 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 it's got to be un, undone and redone. Oh, no, this is so professional. No, I, I mean, it, it's not terrible. It just sounds a little bit, uh, uh, it, it would have been a little better, but we'll, we'll work on it between now and next show. It'll be fine like this. Again, this is uh, what, what you get with a guy with ALS, folks. So take it or leave it. You know, it is what it is. Um, I'm so sorry, Stacey. I do want to hear that Don't again. Don't worry, Steve. So, okay. uh, no, I do, I do worry because I, I found I was kind of fascinated with that. Um, how did you feel when you heard him talking about you guys as the way? Now, did Brian listen with you? He listened the first time and he could only listen to the first few minutes and then he got really just upset and he's like, okay, I got to go. I'm, mo I'm going to mow the lawn. <laughs> and, uh, angry or, or sad it did. or what? It, it, yeah. It, I, bet. I tried not to be upset, but it did bother me. Um, and I mean, how could it not like, just, especially when they bring up, especially when they bring up your kids' names, right? 
Um, oh my God, wait, what? Then, yeah. They yeah. brought up your kids. So, oh my God, I'd have been fighting mad. I would have yeah. been, I would have been up in their face. That's just, yeah. that's beyond so, the pale. That's just, beyond. yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was, that's not right. Yeah. No. Um, I think that was the worst. It, it, they drew it out for seven months of this. Right. Yeah. That's not all they did it every week. For seven not months, every week days. no not every week but it was just continuously like oh. every once in a while bringing us up and um i think what finally sealed the deal i think it would have probably been a year but you know my mom she she uh she's a mom and um she ended up writing a google <laughs> review of the church <laughs> and she didn't really hold back so it was about oh. a week after her her Google review, we got officially um, excommunicated in the next sermon. So we were done. They, they I was like, thought that would like hurt your feelings to get excommunicated. It's just part of their church discipline and, and how they, they facilitate everything. So. Oh Lord. Yeah. That's pretty weird. Yeah. That's pretty weird. Yeah. Which is, I mean, you think about that and, and, some denominations or some other, you know, form like Jehovah's Witnesses, but this was just uh, a Christian Reformed Church. Um, yeah, was everyone thinks I was. Was it a what? Sorry. Small. How big of a church was it? Um, it was about eighty people. So. So pretty small. So small. They, yeah, and you know, you know why they were doing that, right? Yep, to keep other people from doing what we were doing. So if yeah. everyone in here is listening, they're going, okay, if, if we don't behave, this is what happens to us. Exactly. Yeah, right, exactly. That. But I am happy to report because I do once in a while, I'll just be like, what are they going to preach about today? And I'll listen just kind of like, oh my God, I can't believe I used to sit and listen to this crap. Um, but someone else also uh, did what we did and they have oh. been... They left. So now they're on, to them. they're on to them. Are they doing the same thing yeah, but, to them? But they so, have finished the process. Work. But I was just, I was really happy though that us being, you know, dragged through the mud didn't deter someone else from deciding to leave as well. So that was, that made me actually really happy. Hey, Dave, I don't I know if hopeful. you can easily get to your settings. Can it, it, uh, when you hit the gear icon in vMix call, does it actually say it's your mic or it's the laptop mic? I'm starting to actually suspect. We're on the wrong mic. Yeah, I'm so sorry. You'd think I'd never no, done that before. Um, a vMix mic. Let me find that. Hang on. Yeah, there's uh, a gear icon in the bottom of the vMix call that you connected to, uh, and you should be able to check your settings if you're able oh, to reach those. Okay. Yeah, I can. We got to work on that foot pedal thing we talked about once. Yeah, for sure. For sure, we can uh, get those lined up, or even uh, in the future, set up where I can remote in and change your settings for you. Phone. Yeah, you're right. I'm on the wrong mic. What an idiot! I just you'd think I'd never you're done not. this. <laughs> no, nah, I mean he's a little stupid. The ALS is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I will not jump on that. <laughs> it's affecting his this brain. Is, this is Dave. You I. guys can have that banter. I can't. I once just he can't. once you change <laughs> it, Dave, better. it'll you'll probably have to hit a refresh next we to it or something. Have- do I have to re- reconnect? Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to take me away for a minute? For seconds, not even. Oh. And I'm back. So much better. Oh, that sounds so much better. <laughs> and now uh, when your notifications go off, I bet you that's not as bad either. In fact, I'm going to test it just to be a dick. Let's Jimmy, go. what would I do without you? But anyway, I'm sorry, Stacy. Oh, so much um, better. Yeah. Don't worry. Cool. I mean, we're supposed to check this beforehand. We were just backstage bantering. We should have been actually checking our stuff. Jimmy, you should have made me check it. It's your fault. Yeah, but you, <laughs> you had that 15-minute session where you wanted to berate me about all my character flaws, and I was trying to get past that, but you kept I mentioning just, how my hairline's not as good as I think it is and my beard is patchy and all that I was just stuff. trying to diagnose your non-ALS. I mean, I mean, oh, yeah. Was, we settled the fact that you don't have ALS. So you told great. me I do have. So if everybody who's watching knows I mentioned that I'm developing carpal tunnel and then made a joke <laughs> where I said, 
Dave, can you even imagine what that kind of th- suffering is like? And Dave <laughs> responded with, um, well, carpal tunnel is what I thought I had. <laughs> I was like, you asshole. So, Jimmy's been Googling <laughs> ALS symptoms ever since. No, no, I already, I already know you and I haven't turned into a giant no. asshole like you yet. So I don't think I, got, I have one. I know. No. <laughs> as, soon as, I, as soon as I get a Southern draw, that'll be it. Why don't we actually take a call since I've flubbed up most of the, <laughs> most of the first part of this show uh, as a rank amateur? Um, let's talk to Jack he, him in Florida. Hey, Jack, you're on the line with Dave and Stacy. How are you doing? Hello, Jack. I hope we got this call right. Oh, nope. His call doesn't look like it's there. Uh, it seems like he hung up immediately. Yeah. Oh, he. Okay. Maybe he'll call back. Um, Jack, if you're there, call back. I wanted to talk to you. But let's go to Reagan, she, her in Georgia. Hey, Reagan, you're on the line with Dave and Stacy. Hi. Um, how y'all doing? Hey, good. Good to hear from you. What can we do for you tonight? Okay. Um, yeah, basically, I was just trying to, yeah, without, uh, you know, any difficulty or anything like that. Um, sorry. Like I can't really hear that well. Um, basically, I was just trying to figure out how to deal with um, living without uh, religion, a part of my life, and um, like dealing with my family members, you know, not really agreeing or outright discriminating against me. Because I don't believe anymore. Mm-hmm. So you, um, you're an atheist and you've got Christian family members who are ostracizing you because you don't believe anymore. Right. And how long has that been going um, on? Oof, uh, for a while, actually. Actually, about, about two years, okay. two and a half. Um, I found, uh, this channel, uh, two years ago when, you know, like I finally was like, okay, I'm atheist. <laughs> yeah. Like actually saying it, you know, We've and, been there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, um. Yeah, my life has really, like, gone downhill, and it's gotten, like, worse. Like, like certain stuff is okay, but, like, other things are just horrible. I'm sorry. And whenever I... It's okay. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, whenever I try to talk to friends or family or or anything like that, they'll say, oh, well, you just got a prayer to God and believe in, in him and he'll make it all better for you. And I'm like, I, I've tried that. <laughs> like, yeah, I've, I've, I used to be in church almost every day. Like if there wasn't, anything going on at the church, I wasn't doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. You were there but, every time the doors were opened, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I was. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I understand. Yeah. And it wasn't until I started asking like a bunch of questions about it and you know like actually reading the bible and actually writing down like you know like all the different bible verses and stuff like that that i saw that okay this this is kind of it's not add up. consistent right. or that's what i did right <laughs> like I, it was yeah <laughs> i used the bible itself um, to show me how inconsistent and 
and difficult the Bible itself was. So yeah, I had the same experience, Reagan. Yeah, and um, basically, like, I, the reason why I feel like I am atheist is because I was reading the Bible. Like, because mm -hmm. when I started out, like, I wanted to know more about, you know, having, you know, a religion. Like, I've had religious experiences, but I've also been put into mental health hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, I have to take medication every day because of that. Um, I've had uh, unaliving attempts. Um, like, mm -hmm. but you had some tough times. Then, right? yeah. like, when, whenever, yeah, then when, whenever that has happened, you know, like, like maybe my mom would be like, "Oh well, that's selfish. If you want to unalive yourself, like that's not fair to God." And and you know, instead of you know trying to figure out, okay, well, what like what what am I going through to make me think that it's not worth it? You know, right? Well, like she standing. didn't. You know, Stacey and that when I was a kid. Stacy and I both have some experience in navigating relationships post faith, both friends and family. Mm -hmm. Stacy, what yeah, what would you say to how to how to being ostracized by religious religious family or friends? What what's your how would you mm -hmm. respond to Reagan? Well, in my situation, the people that have been Christian. I don't live near them anymore. Um, so it's been easy. I don't know how, how close you are as far as distance, Reagan. So mm -hmm. that, that could be a lot more difficult as far, if, if you see, if you're seeing them day to day. Um, my situation, yeah. I, um, I live, I moved and that's when I deconverted. And so I kind of started over in a completely new space. Um, and then the few people that I did tell, um, like some of my family, they were accepting um, with, you know, it, it felt conditional, you know, just mm -hmm. like, oh, yes, of course. But, you know, mm -hmm. there was still that, I understand, like there was that change, that shift in the in the relationship and dynamics. Sure. So, um, but yeah. are you the only atheist in your, in your family? Or is there other people that you can talk to or connect to at least? Um, like, I don't really know any other person in my family that's atheist, um, mm -hmm. like, right. you know, out loud or anything. Yeah. Um, is there anyone in and, your family um, that maybe doesn't go to church and you've kind of picked up on the fact that maybe they're yeah. either doubting and that you could somehow ask questions in a sort of roundabout way without being yeah, too dark that's a good point, see Reagan, like how they respond to that. That's a good see point. See if you Reagan. have a commonality. I don't know if you know Stacy's story, but Stacy has a podcast mm -hmm. called Stacy's the Stacy's mom podcast. <laughs> and the way, the way that oh, came okay. about, <laughs> no, it's, it's great. You need to check it out. The way that came about is that when Stacy was deconverting, um, well, you tell it, Stacey. You didn't know your mom yeah. had already been there for years. Yeah. Tell and so when no. I did, yeah. So I, I was deconverting <laughs> completely on my own. And I was feeling kind of okay. nervous to like eventually share this with her. Not nervous because I knew mm -hmm. she would love me because we we're very close. Um, but I, mm -hmm. I went out for coffee with her one morning and then I, I was like, I was excited to tell her, but also like, oh, how is she going to respond? And and when I did tell her, mm -hmm. she was like, oh, my God, like, this is how I've been feeling for 20 years. Oh um, but you were the one years. person in my life <laughs> that was the strongest Christian. And I just didn't know how to tell you how I was feeling. So, um, oh, I mean, you man. don't have to necessarily be as blunt. <laughs> I was because I'm just a very yeah. blunt person. <laughs> I kind of just tell whatever I don't believe anymore. Yeah, I don't like believe I, I get excited about 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but especially with my mom, like I tell her everything, but, um, yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to necessarily do it yeah. that way, but you could kind of just, but that's, I guess that's like something to consider Reagan is that we often don't know what other family members or friends mm -hmm. are thinking in secret. And so we might think I'm the only one in my family or I'm the only one in this community that's feeling this way or having these questions. And yet when we start talking about them, maybe just tiptoeing around the corners of it, you know, not coming out and saying, Hey, by the way, I'm an atheist, huh? Uh, but just, right. just tiptoeing around the corners of some of the questions about faith, mm -hmm. we might find that there are more people than we realize who are also going through the same kind of questions. Have you thought about that, Reagan? Um, I have, is this, um, right now I'm like really in a bad spot. Um, mm -hmm. um, the part of the reason why, um, I stopped believing was because, um, I had a mental breakdown two years ago mm -hmm. and, um, they like basically they felt that I couldn't take care of my children anymore, even mm -hmm. though I was um I had a house, I had kids in there, I had a I had my fiance and and um you know, I was working, he was taking care of the kids at that point because he, he didn't have a job at that at that time. He didn't have a job and I mm -hmm. had one. So you know, basically, like everything was like reversed, so to speak, right. um, from like the norm or whatever. Right. And um, basically, you know, I was trying to, you know, navigate, you know, like um, my feelings and my thoughts and stuff, and trying to make sure, you know, I didn't, I didn't snap, but yeah, yeah. I still ended up snapping because we were in like a really bad financial bind. Um, the landlord that re rented out the house to us, like, uh, didn't tell us that there was like rats in the house. Mm. Um, so we couldn't stay there anymore, but I didn't know until after like all of that happened, I ended up in a mental health hospital for like two weeks. And when I got out, everything was just wrong like everything was different like yeah i don't have my kids anymore um i don't have my house anymore um my youngest child he's with um uh, my fiance's mom now like um my old my other children they're in foster care like it this like everything was just like falling apart like mm -hmm. my heart was broken and i was like right. and i started thinking to myself it was like if there's a god like why would he even allow that to happen because i would never hurt my children like you know i i would <laughs> you know yeah. you're right no, that, that, now, those, are oftentimes, those are oftentimes the times when when we yeah. do start to question whether there's a God there, when he's continuing to not show up mm -hmm. in times and ways that he right. should, if there's a God that's active in our lives. Where is he? And so that's oftentimes where we end up coming to the end of ourselves and coming to, end of, yeah. to the end of our faith. Yeah. And so. then um, for a long time, you know, like I was just thinking about it, but I wasn't necessarily all the way in and like i would go to like a friend or or a family member and they would say well you're probably just mad at god or whatever oh, yeah. it, it's yeah. not his fault yeah. you know that happened like you're mad at god maybe it's something like you did you. and i was like yeah. why, why would i want my children to be taken away from me like that's yeah. that's not something that I want, you know. So well, I'm not I'm really just mad that, at God or whatever. I'm sorry you've you gone know? through so much stuff. I am glad that it's helped yeah. open your eyes to 
yeah. your present reality. Right. But I wanted, I wanted to let, before I let you go, I want to just touch on um, okay. your, you know, in terms of talking to to your family members about your atheism or your lack of faith or whatever you want to call it coming out as we call it, mm -hmm. you know, I, I always caution people and yourself included. If, if your situation is such that you're dependent on these people for uh, where you live or your, your help, I mean, you don't want to cut off anything that would, that would hurt you. You don't want to do anything that would hurt you with your family members. So be careful right. of that uh, by all means. And I always tell folks, you know, I want people to live their best life and to write their own story. That's, that's, that's my whole thing. I want people to be free to be who them, who them, who they are, be themselves. Mm -hmm. But there, there does come a time when you need to be careful about how and when you say things and what you, what you do let people know. So if, if you are in a situation mm -hmm. or anybody watching, sorry, bad itch, anybody watching mm -hmm. that, that this would be a dangerous thing for you to do. I mean, I've known kids who've lived with their parents and they can't let the parents know because they would be thrown out of the house or something. And you don't want to put yourself in harm's way. So no. as best you can navigate yeah. those relationships, do so gently and then depend upon places like this where you can come and be with your people and hang out, you know, with the group in the chat and just know that you've got people in your corner uh, even if it's virtually. And then when the time comes, you'll get to know more people in person. So does that make sense, Reagan? Yes, it does. It, it's just, you know, um, I recently just moved away from my, my mom. Like I, I used to stay with my mom mm -hmm. for a while and it was horrible. Like I've, I've had a job, I've lost a job and I've, gone through the part where she's basically like asking for money or whatever when it wasn't the case before before it was like okay well you can get on your feet and you know give me like something small or whatever or like maybe twenty dollars or or you know something like that but then it jumped to okay well give me two hundred dollars um each month and i'm like yeah well, I can't do that. I just lost my job, you know, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. Well, you mm -hmm. hang in there. And then really my fiance, you, you know, got us out or whatever. Yeah. So. I really do appreciate you calling. It was good to talk with you. And yeah. um, let you just, just know that we're here for you and um, keep us, keep us right. up with how things are going. Let us call in some other time and chat with us and uh, continue oh. to okay. continue to be yourself as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thanks, Reagan. No, right. Thank you. I'm still Oh ooh, I thought sorry. Bye, mm -hmm. Reagan. Sorry. <laughs> um call us seven two oh we have lines open, seven two oh six one nine two two eight eight. Wanna remind you that we have other shows coming up. I don't know the schedule because I don't have it in front of me. I do know this. I'll be on tomorrow night with uh, one and only Matt Dillahunty on The Hangup. So come back tomorrow night, this same time, same bat channel, same bat station, same bat time. Um, and we'll chat. Ch that's for old people, uh, Stacy. that. I get it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I've heard it. <laughs> you, you've heard old. But thank you, you old, for you have old calling TV. me young. But, uh, <laughs> but call, us, call us folks. We'd love to hear from you tonight. Also, uh, don't forget to support the channel, patreon.com slash call the line. And as always, you know, if you don't know, you I'm sharing it with you now, um, send in your super chats. Any super chat, $5 or more, whatever your currency is and whatever your country is, uh, we will read that super chat on the, on the show at the end of the show. Uh, any questions you have, any comments you have, any um, wonderful things you want to say to Jimmy, um, you can do that in the super chats, five dollars or more. So, feel free to do that throughout the show. Let's take another call. What do you think, Stacy? Yes, let's do that. Right. Okay, Charlie. He, him. You're a theist. It says here that 
there's a God and Dave doesn't know it yet. So you got a pretty short lease. What do you have to say for Stacy and Dave on the line tonight? Hi, Stacy. Hi, Dave. How are you? No, nope, yeah. never mind. Actually, real quick, uh, Charlie, you know you've been banned. <laughs> Why are you calling back? You've been banned multiple Charlie, times. Why stop. even bother? Do you have nothing better but, to do? But but Dave wants to know. And I okay, never mind. You're not going to answer my uh, my question, which was why did you call back when you've been banned? Obviously, we always have an open. Everyone can call who isn't banned all the time and respond to the questions. But Charlie, I know I've said this to you before, and I'd love to say it to you again. Go fuck yourself, you condescending twat waffle of an asshole. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh my god! I uh, yeah, you know. I was so excited today. for a theist for a second. And then this know, was right? the. This was the, oh, and when I reveal to you the truth, when you know, when I tell you, oh, it's oh, going God. to be, and you're going to see, because I, uh, I I have the truth because I have never been sick, which was, by the way, his main argument, that what? he and everyone who believes what he been. believes have never been sick. And everyone who ever was sick, that it's because they didn't really believe. And when you believe what I believe, by the way, he also, that voice, that accent he does, I think is also fake because there's it's another Josh person who calls in with the same general information, who calls in with like this Emo oh, Phillips God. voice where he goes, hi guys, I just wanted <laughs> to call in and talk about how the ba-da-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba
in church. Yeah. Was so. that? I mean, was the were we supposed to harvest the gold as a valuable thing that God? I don't gave know, us but to, people would people would be running up the tooth. You know, just right. Well, yeah, up. no, he would he put, put the it enamel in, back apparently and buy gold. Right? I don't know. Yeah. Just fix the people tooth. would run up and like I got a gold filling and oh, literally God. never saw it. I'm like, I think you probably now now I'm thinking back and you probably had that. that forgot about it or something. All right. We got lines open. Let's talk to Jack He Him in Florida. Hey Jack, you're on the line with Dave and Stacy, apostasy, apostasy. What's on your mind? Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. Sorry to disappoint. I am an atheist. So oh, um I was bye. listening to you guys earlier. Bye. Oh, so are we. It's okay. Now, I mean, it's not a disappointment. I love to talk with atheists about anything that's going on in their lives. That's what this show is. And I see the subject of your call is about the point of life. But my point is when these theists call in and all they can do is troll us, it just shows me I, I'm, my honest, honest question. Are there any honest theists out there who are willing to to state their case and, and back it up? What are you so afraid of, people? But anyway, I'm ranting again. Sorry. Jack, how's it going? What can we do for you? Okay, so um, basically, I, I'm wondering about like what gives your life meaning. What give what can give my life meaning? Because I mean, when I was a theist, um, you know, the, the idea of there being an afterlife and uh, yeah. that I was loved, you know, uh, infinitely by some creator God, you know, gave my life meaning. I was Catholic specifically and even said like in the catechism, like the meaning of life is to know and love God. But now that I'm an atheist, you know, I, I find myself, it seems like the only meaning there is, is just like heathenism. And it seems empty to me. And maybe it's because I just, I liked the book of Ecclesiastes too much or something. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> but it just seems empty. Well, the meaning of That's life is chocolate. Advice. The meaning of life is chocolate. <laughs> so next question. I'm just kidding. Yeah. A <laughs> um, couple of questions. How long have you been what you would consider an atheist? How long has this journey been where you've moved from that place of having the purpose of God that you were told was your reason for living to what you consider now where you're questioning purpose? What, what's, what's your journey look like briefly? Okay. Um, Let's just put it this way. I was born to uh, a Catholic mom and a, and, a, and a Muslim father. So I, I was raised like Catholic. I fell away from my faith when I was like 13 or so, then came back to it when I was about 20. And then just about like around last year, I'm 32 currently. Around last okay. year, uh, my father died. And oh. that really shook up everything in my head because I had to grapple with the fact that I belong to a church that is going to damn my father to hell. And uh, I guess I started thinking more critically and I started reading Bart Ehrman and listening to you guys. And, and I don't know. I, I just, that, so I would say about a year. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty heavy. Um, that's a legitimate issue with you that you went through that. Yeah, the, uh, the concept of hell and your dad not being welcomed there because of who he was, or more importantly, who he wasn't, that would get, that should get, it should have gotten you thinking about, you know, what you believed and why. So I'm sorry about the loss of your dad and what, what you went through with that. I'm sure that was very traumatic to, in those days, be considering, okay, dad's not going to be in heaven and I'm going to be in, I mean, that must have been jarring to you to consider that. And now that you've let that go, I guess, do you, hold the opinion that none of us are going to be there? I don't believe in an afterlife. I don't believe right. in, in souls. Like I, I'm a materialist. You know, I guess right. that's the best way to describe me. Yeah. But I um, I'm trying to make sense of a world where, you know, purpose is derived from, like, hedonism, but, mm -hmm. it, but it, in a way that it doesn't seem vain. And maybe it's just my own biases that's holding me back. I don't know. Okay. That's why I figured I'd call you guys. Yeah, no, I appreciate the question. That's a good, it's a good topic. Um, Stacy, I got some thoughts on this, but I want you to jump in on, on your, 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 uh, well, as far as, um, for me, I felt actually really happy as soon as I gave up religion. I, I felt sad about 
not having heaven to look forward to, but that only lasted a really short time um, because I realized how precious this life is. Um, Because I think as a, as a Christian or a theist or, or especially a Christian, because that's what I was, but you're always looking forward to the afterlife. You're not really appreciating Mm -hmm. like the here and now as much. Um, So I think for me, I just, I've I've appreciated like every day more than I did before. Um, And I just, I see it as so much more fragile because before I thought, oh, I'm going to live forever. Um, So now it's just, I, I, I find meaning in every single day. Um, That hasn't been an issue because before I was just basically living to just get to heaven. Um, So now that I don't have that, um, yeah, meaning is in every day. So. Yeah, Yeah, that's, that's a lot of what I, where I've landed too. I mean, I was a lot like Mm -hmm. you mentioned, Jack, uh, as a believer, I was an evangelical and I believed that, you know, this, this life here was just a dress rehearsal for the real, the real Mm -hmm. show. And that it, it all was predicated on your beliefs and what you believed and, you know, where you spent eternity. But yeah, we're taught that whole narrative that God has a wonderful plan for your life. And before the foundations of the earth, he knit you in your mother's womb and all these verses that seem to indicate how wonderful and special we are and how incredibly uh, wonderful and special God's plan for us is. And yet when you look around the world, that doesn't seem to be the case for most of the world's population. If God's, if that's God's plan for that child to be born into starvation in Africa because he was born in the wrong place to the wrong family, that's that's not a good, good plan. It's only a good plan if I'm living fat and happy. But beyond that, when I've let go of faith, um, I, I, I like when you mentioned the word hedonism, Jack, you, you were talking about that if, if without that, you know, you're left to just surmise that all we have is hedonism. And that's a word that's, I find interesting that you would use that to me connotates like debauchery and living for the, the vapid flesh and just uh, eating and drinking and being merry and just, just, uh, just, giving into all of your appetites at all the time and whatever you want to do, you do. And it could be that there are some people that may live that way. I don't live that way. Um, because my behavior, uh, affects people around me and I don't always do everything I want to do because it might harm someone next to me or someone that is in my life. I would rather use the word, um, in terms of what, our life is, is just, you get to do your own, you get to write your own story. You get to live your own life. No one's telling you what you can and can't do. And that's going to be dictated by, um, the people around you and what you value that we still have values as atheists. Mm -hmm. I think you use a word like hedonism to me, and it may be something different to you. And I'd like to hear your feedback on that. To me, that's like, I don't have values. I just do whatever my appetites demand of me that day. And I don't live that way. I don't know of anybody in my life that does. Um, But to have a value system that places importance in different, different areas of life in terms of how we interact with the people in our lives, to me, that's what it boils down to. How do I interact with the people in my life? Because None of us live in a vacuum unless you live on a desert island by yourself. We all live in a community of people of some of some sort. And mm-hmm. for that to function in any way that's that's good and reasonable, we have to learn how to coexist together and learn how to give and take and ebb and flow. That to me doesn't mean hedonism. That's not just no. giving into the appetites and the pleasures that I want to give into. And I know that there are some Christians who think that's what atheists do. My brother's writing a book called Modern Paganism, and he thinks that everybody who's not a Christian is a pagan. I don't think he knows what pagan is, but he just puts all of us in that category, that we're all just uh, creatures of the flesh. 
-hmm. that we eat drink, and, and murder and rape and pillage and that we're a bunch of vikings descending upon uh, uh some village <laughs> so in, in, in the north of, of france or something. i don't know i i just don't that's not how i see life working no. and life works just fine without a god we don't need a God to give us our value system. We don't need a God to tell us what we can and can't do. It makes sense. It unfolds before us. It's not that complicated. Mm -hmm. um, does I that make sense to you, Jack? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Stacy. I was just going to say, I think um, just even since leaving Christianity and religion, I've, I've become a better parent because I've just opened the world up to mm. my kids in a different way um, as far as just accepting of uh, other people's just, you know, like with the LGBTQ, I. A plus. Yeah. I froze. I'm sorry. I saw myself yeah, we, freeze. We all did. Um, okay. But I think in that way. Hey, Jack, are you there? Yeah, I think we lost him too. I'm going to refresh. Oh. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm fixing it. So remember when I told you, you we were it. having internet issues last yeah, night? Yeah, internet issues. Yeah. It yeah. happened the exact, like, I think at the same minute. So something is fucked up, but hang on, I'll fix it. One sec. Okay. So maybe it wasn't. Ready to freezing. connect. Click connect to show now. You are connected as the host. Welcome, host. You are now. Hey, you there? Hey. Are you there, Jack? Audio recording is on dual channel it, it's still doing it's connecting but... oh okay it's still rebooting okay oh hello there he is hey jack oh, we lost you man. we've got some... oh Are you there, yeah jack? yeah i was like i can't hear anything for like a minute oh. um, yeah i'm still here I, I i um i heard everything up until about two minutes ago or um okay. and uh regarding hedonism um if i want to just clarify real quick i yeah. i guess more more like the philosophical way of how it's defined okay of like you know one's own pleasure is like the highest good that's how we define what's good or not in the moral sense of things i mean like i understand what you're saying i think it's mostly used in, in, in a negative kind of connotation I, I guess i'll try to convey that but um i i, I really appreciate you guys um giving your perspective because I, I i think i get what you're putting down i'm picking up what you're putting down um about like you know writing our own story kind of thing yeah um and that can give our lives meaning so i, I appreciate it thank you yeah, yeah. that's what i was going to ask you um if someone were to ask you now jack i know that's why you called in what the point of life is or what's the purpose what would you say would be a we got an echo here jimmy i'm not sure what that's from Anyway, how would you define purpose now, Jack? What would you? Um, I, I, I would say that uh, it's kind of up to me to, to define my own purpose and for me to just continue to be the man that I, that I think I want to be, the, like a, a good kind of, I don't know, a, a good man um, that, that helps others and Mm -hmm. wants to learn <laughs> and uh that, that, that's what gives my life meaning i suppose yeah i think it's that simple i mean I, I i think the christians try to confuse the matter when when we say we're moving away from god and his designed purpose for us to find our own they try to make it like how can you tell you know how can there be meaning and purpose without god it's not that complicated what is right. Are you in a room with someone right now? <laughs> is that Jimmy? Uh, Jimmy. Sorry, was my mic open? <laughs> I was checking. <laughs> Kevin McCarthy's announcing that he's not rerunning for speaker. I must have left my mic open and not realized. I'm just glad it wasn't earlier. I was singing Hamilton. I'm glad that's not when the uh, mic was open. Oh, that was entertaining. Um, that's funny. Um, but yeah, they, they, they make it complicated like we can't, how can you define purpose and meaning? Just look at the definitions of the word. You make meaning and purpose every day when you get up with, with how you spend your life, with 
what your values are. It's not that complicated, and there's no God needed. Stacy, I wanted you to finish the point you were making about being a better mom and how you oh, approach, yeah. approach the world and treat, treat your, teach your kids. Yeah, I just, because um, I feel look, when we were still in the church and as Christians, um, in a way, they were more sheltered, obviously. <laughs> That's kind of yeah. how you are when you're a Christian. Um, and since leaving, um, they're now in like a public school. And so they're learning a whole different curriculum and just getting exposed to a ton of different people. And just also we have people in our family who um, are LGBTQ. And so just explaining that to them in just really simple, natural terms. And, yeah. and then they're just like, oh, okay. And it's like, yeah. And that's just how we just love them. And, and that's a totally normal thing. And so just being able to just explain it as this is the way the world works and not as a, that is a sin. And <laughs> if you ever commit something like that, you're going to hell. So it just, I feel like I become a better parent and they're going to be better people and they're not going to go through all the yeah. crap that, you know, I went through it. Cause I, you said you were a Christian for 37 years. I was a Christian for 37 years cause I was born into it. And mm -hmm. so we were like the exact same pretty much. And we're the same age then, right? We're yeah. the same. Well, we would have been the same spiritual age. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> that's all that matters. Do you remember when? <laughs> that's what, oh, yeah. 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 We we're the same spiritual Jack, age. Do you feel like, I know you mentioned that when your dad passed away, you were a bit traumatized by the idea of him not going to heaven. Do you feel like you've been able to move away from uh, any kind of fear of hell or of the afterlife? Do you, are you kind of at peace with all that now? Well, I, I'm not afraid of, of hell. It's just I'm more afraid of, like, living a life in which I, I don't get to do what I want. Like, because I think Stacy said earlier, and this is what I agree with, too, is you know, because this is the only life we got, we only got, like, one shot. And I don't want to, like, miss it. Right. So it just mm -hmm. seems like everything is more important now. Yeah. And... Maybe that's why I'm sad because I don't have um, certain things in my life that I would like to have, and maybe that's just a sign that I should just work on those things more. You know, get them, man. That's it. That's the point. You nailed it, dude. That's that's exactly the point. When there's an after, when we have, when we have in mind that there's an afterlife, then it cheapens the value of the moments we have here. It cheapens the value of this mm -hmm. one life we know we have because we think we've got all that time. When the reality is, once you come to terms with the fact that you probably don't, this is the one life you have, it forces you to maximize whatever that is. And so get busy living, get busy grabbing the moments that you can, get busy making the most of every relationship, of every experience, soaking it up and getting all of you can. That's not hedonism. That's called living life. That's called living. And so with me having a terminal disease, and recognizing that that's coming to an end sooner than I wanted it to, sooner than I thought it would, then it, it has forced me to narrow my focus on what, what is here and what is now, and what can I do to maximize every moment that I have. That's why I live large. I live loud. I die out loud. I live out loud. I'm doing everything I can to make everything count and not sitting on the sidelines waiting for it to come to me. So that's what I encourage folks to do. Go out. If, if you're wondering, what's the purpose? What's the meaning? Go out and get some. Get some fucking meaning. Get some fucking purpose. Make, get something. Uh, tie, tie yourself to something that makes a difference. That's something that charges your battery. Something that runs your motor. Something that gets you up in the morning. It can be anything. But don't let it be nothing. Um, that's the meaning and purpose. And we, we can all grab it. And there's no God needed. End of rant. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good rant. <laughs> Does that make sense, Jack? That was perfect. Yeah, that was perfect. Thank you. I, re I really, I really appreciate you guys. I, I think you guys are doing great work and I'll just uh, hang up if you want from you and uh, let you guys get another caller or something. Okay, man. Appreciate your call. That's a really good, important, that's an important topic. It's, it's one that we need to revisit often is is 
trying to come to terms with meaning and purpose in life because we all want our life to mean something, and it does. We just have to recognize it. We don't need God to give us that. Thanks, Jack. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that all right. Real quick. Ship that put, oh, no. Is my mic open again? Oh, stop it. Well, now <laughs> we can hear you. Yeah. Let's I, talk to Danny, she, Annie in Georgia. Hey, Danny, you're on with Dave and Stacy. Hi, Dave. Hi, Stacy. How, how are you doing? Good. Hi, good to hear you. from you. How are you doing tonight? Good. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to talk about a slightly heavy topic. Um, so I, if I do cry, I might cut <laughs> because I because I might not be able to talk afterwards. We, but, we yeah. do that. We do that here regularly. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, I I wanted to call because uh, I wanted to talk about. Uh, um, I I was spiritual about a year ago. Uh, and, uh, when my mom was alive, she, she died about three years ago now. Uh, and, uh, she had ALS. I had, I had to take care of her for about three years. And, um, uh, it's, it, it's like, we, we had a very strong relationship. Uh, I could tell her pretty much anything, things like that. Um, but, but like most people, you, you know, when, <laughs> It's like when you're getting closer to death and things like that, you start thinking more about conspiracies, maybe, or like just becoming more religious, things like that, right? Um, yeah. So she, she was getting increasingly more paranoid and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she she just she thought I was making her sick, you know, that she wasn't eating right, and at some point she couldn't even swallow. On top mm -hmm. of that. Uh, <laughs> um. But yeah, she, she, she believed, you know, in the, in the law of attraction. So there was like this whole thing of like, Oh, uh, it's, it's my fault that I'm sick or it's your fault that mm -hmm. I'm sick or something's happening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. I know how that, I know how that narrative goes. Um, yeah. So she died of ALS and she was in that, <clears throat> in that spiritual frame of mind when she passed and that damaged your relationship at the end. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, there was yeah. a lot of days where I was, uh, uh, unfortunately I wasn't on medication. I have, you know, depression, things like that. And I was so exhausted because it was like day in and day out. I was by myself. Uh, my brother didn't help, but, but he was there. Um, so I was financially supporting, uh, she was getting uh, SSI stuff. So. But uh, yeah. I was by myself with her and my brother, um, and so uh, I I feel I feel bad even now that I couldn't really give her things that she could have experienced, uh, like I don't know a bucket list or something, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I did take mm -hmm. her to um, places she wanted to go. She she wanted to do a uh, homeopathic. Oh, I think that's yeah. what what it is. Yeah, yeah, homeopathic things. Uh, she she had a firm belief that that she didn't want to take the medication that they offered for ALS uh, because she mm -hmm. believed that it was just all money that they had a cure, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, well, it, it, it was difficult. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Um, ALS is yeah. hard enough. ALS is hard enough by itself. Mm -hmm. uh, right, right. Just yeah. the disease itself, as you know. Um, mm -hmm as I know, but you know more than me because you've been further down the road than I've been yet and how, mm -hmm. how tough it gets at the end. It's bad enough by itself. When you add in the spiritual component, the woo woo, I call it, or this idea that, that there's, you've attracted it to yourself somehow that just adds layers of complication that are so unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and it sounds like it put a lot of strain on on your relationship with your mom, and I'm really sorry about that. Sorry, first of all, for you having to go through that to begin mm -hmm. with. Um, but to add that on to it is just to add insult to injury, if you will. And I wish yeah. it, I wish she hadn't have gone down that rabbit hole because it's just yeah. it just complicates everything. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, and living far from family and everything, it was, I mean, maybe on some some points it was kind of positive because maybe they would have also, like, egged on the spiritual that could stuff. Be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, may, uh, that may been a, uh, yeah, that may have been a blessing in disguise, as they say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but. I, I w- yeah, I wish I could have gave her more, but, but she did at least, like, when when she did pass, uh, I I got everybody to call and leave her messages and things like that. And she, I think she did hear it. And then, well, uh, well, she won't remember now, I guess. But <laughs> but at, le- yeah. at least it was a good end <laughs> in that regard. Uh, well, I, I know. Yeah, I know you did everything you could, Danny. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you. It's 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 just an impossible situation. You know yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, there's just. There's no good way to to navigate that. You can do everything you can do, and it's still not enough because there's it's never enough. There's no way to fix it. There's no way to make yeah. it okay. And yeah, giving an, an experience as much as you can. That's one of the things our our nonprofit is is going to be trying to do is is bucket list mm-hmm. moments with ALS. I've been the recipient of one myself, and I can't tell yeah. you the value of it. It's just it's just a it's a moment that you can't put a price on, honestly. But I know that yeah, when, you're, I'm so when, you're happy the, for it. when you're the sole caregiver of someone like that, the burden of the, that burden is enormous. Mm-hmm. And I just want you to know that you did everything you could. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I appreciate everything you do, you know, um, I listened to the shows and like, uh, I was happy to find that I didn't really have a reason to believe in what I believed in. And, um, while I was believing, I just had nightmares all the time where my mom just was angry with me, you know? And, uh, Mm. I, I was a bit suicidal and things like that. But, um, but once I finally let everything go, and uh, I, I felt so much better. I felt like a reason to live and things like that. And uh, I'm I'm happy about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also I also read your book, and it, it was wonderful, by the way. Oh, thank oh, you. So, I'm thank glad you. you um, yeah, it's it's helping me a lot. So thank you. Um, what was? I, I guess I'll I'll go now, but uh, I'm glad I I got the courage to call. <laughs> Well, I'm I glad you too. got the courage too. Yeah. What was your, <laughs> I mean, before you go, to, what was your um, spiritual journey? I know you said your mom got spiritual at the end. W- were you ever a Christian or were you ever spiritual? It says you're an atheist, but what was your journey like? So, um, well, technically, technically we were spiritual most of our lives. Um, mm-hmm. That's how we thought of it. Um, but she got more intense at the end of like, just focusing on it. What I mean, but, um, yeah, yeah, we, I, I don't know. I, I believed in things like, uh, a God, it was kind of deistic sort of thing, but, uh, you know, it was a contradictory, like, oh, they made everything the way it is. Uh, evolution's yeah. real, but everything's the way it is. Uh, mm-hmm. it all just kind of morphs that way. And. Uh, it cares about me, but for some reason it doesn't care, care about other people, you know? <laughs> yeah, you kind, of, you kind of make up your own rules as you go along with that kind of stuff, usually. Right. But, it, it was like a, a God influenced by the Brahmic, uh, you know, Yahweh, but uh, but it became its own kind of thing. And and, it's, and I saw signs everywhere. I thought I, I could speak to angels through tarot. <laughs> I, I followed some of my readings. Yeah. <laughs> And you know, I think you, can, I think you can see. I mean, I know Stacy. When you were a Christian, it was all about mm-hmm. um, factoring God into everything that happened. You know, yeah. God's will, yeah. mm-hmm. God's plan, and and I, I looked for that, signs too, <laughs> confirmation yeah. Yeah. from God and different things. Yeah, because you're trying mm-hmm. desperately to make things make sense. You're trying desperately yeah. to find reasons for things, explanations yeah. for things, and yeah. I mean, I think, and the weird thing is, since I left, I don't see signs anymore. Because, yeah, yeah. Well, God, I know. Just like, yeah. You don't have yours to hear, right? Um, That's right. <laughs> but Danny, I think I think you can understand 
probably, I mean, I can see why your mom was desperate to find some explanations, to find some reasons, to find some meaning in yeah. what happened to her. It's really hard just to accept. If you, if you cling to spiritual notions like that, it's really hard just to accept the randomness of some, something like ALS. It's just so random. Yeah. It's just like, it, it, I just happen to be one of 5,000 people a year in this country that get diagnosed. There's no rhyme or yeah. reason to it. As a Christian, I would have been trying to find a reason. I would have been trying to figure mm -hmm. out what God is saying, what God is doing with this, what's God's plan with this. Well, as yeah. a, how will he as, use it for his glory? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. All that stuff mm -hmm. makes it so complicated. And I know that's what your mom was, was uh, that was what was happening to her. And because she was yeah. going down that road mentally, it damaged your relationship. Whereas if you just let go of that stuff and accept that life happens, now this is yeah. what's happened to me. And now I can either wring my hands about it and worry about it and try to figure it out, or I can just accept it. And then I can just enjoy the time I have left with my family mm -hmm. members, and friends, and experiences I get to have. It just simplifies everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm really sorry yeah. your mom wasn't able to do that. It would have been your last days with her would have been a whole lot sweeter, I think. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your loss there. Thank you. Yeah, I understand. Um, yeah, I, wa I wanted to just clarify also that uh, in regards to the glory of God, for example, we didn't have a belief in like hell or anything like that. So that mm -hmm. wasn't particularly a worry. But um we had a, a belief of like self improvement, which which I still kind of hold as a philosophy. Like I, I always want to improve as a person. Oh yeah. But uh, but yeah, like the the reason for the ALS was like, oh, I did something wrong. Yeah. I made awful decisions. I don't know. It was like, uh, or, or I have to learn from this and then I'll be cured. You know. It's, it's, yeah, mm -hmm. God's teaching it, something, yeah. or I have secret sin, or not enough faith. There's several yeah, little categories, you know. Just, yeah, there's, there's several several things on that bingo card. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Oh, of and course. I'm so happy to call, call him, Danny. Yeah, it was really good to talk Thank with you. Thank you for calling. Awesome. And if I ever have any questions, I'll see if I can call again. <laughs> anytime. You call us anytime, Danny. You take care. Oh, thank you. Okay. All right. You All right. too. Bye. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> oh, I, love it. I love how she got that in. That's awesome. Oh, that I'm so glad she... Call I know. Them. It does take some courage for people to do that, especially if they're afraid they might be emotional. It never oh, stops definitely. me. I'll blubber. I'll blubber all the time. Everybody knows that. Uh, what's a good dying out loud show without Dave crying at least once? <laughs> Let's That's talk true. to, I think it's Jace, JC, he, him in New Mexico. Did I say JC or Jace? Uh, this hi. is Dave. And, hey. Jace. Jace, I'm sorry. Jace. You're on the line with oh, Dave and Stacey. How are you tonight? Hi. Oh, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, yeah, what's on and, your mind? Uh, uh, well, before I get into the into the heavy stuff, because this, this seemed to be a really heavy show, um, I thought that I'd just uh, share a stupid fun fact. Uh, the Stacey's mom song, uh, people think that it was about one of the band member's moms. It was not. It was about one of the band members' grandmas, so it's kind of creepy or weird. Or, like, I mean, I'm not going to kick Shane, but hey, like, <laughs> one of That's them was nice apparently cool. into older women. So, uh, okay. so nice the reason I did for not my call. <laughs> know anything about that, but everyone sings me oh, that hooray. song everywhere I go. <laughs> I know, right? Oh. I bet it gets so irritating. <laughs> I'm but, used to uh, it. I like why. Why I called was. Uh, I, I also lost my mom uh, earlier, like several years ago now. Uh, she had uh, MS, multiple sclerosis, mm. and uh, she died as a complication from uh, a different medication switch or something. Like I'm sure it happens wow. all the time. Wow. But um, her, her funeral, I feel, 
was weaponized and uh and it was basically it to me it felt like nothing more than an altar call um Mm -hmm. like let's make you feel bad that you didn't spend as much time as you wanted to with her and then let's hold her hostage in a place where no one has been and where no one can get to and no one can verify that it exists Mm -hmm. so let's just hold her hostage there but all you have to do is simply but believe and then you can see her again after like after you die it's so sickening to me and i was just Mm. wondering if y'all had any thoughts on funerals and the weaponization thereof and how to uh deal with death of dearly departed loved ones in in a better way than turning it into an altar call <laughs> yes That's, anything would be better than that what are your thoughts stacy yeah oh, well man. actually yesterday on our show our podcast we were talking to someone who he was saying that i think it was it was someone in his family who um passed away and so um it was a cat they the funeral was just a Catholic mass and it was literally just a mass. His family member's name was not mentioned one time. They had to pay for the mass. And um, I, I remember I said to him, yeah, actually, I remember a friend of mine passed away last year. She was the same age as me. And I watched her funeral on live stream and I was to just remember her and am I breaking up again? Yeah, a little bit. It's kind of cute. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm Your so face is sorry. Rah, 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 rah. Well, that's so attractive. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, and so the whole service was about just a Catholic mass. And, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, and I didn't hear her name mentioned one time. I actually really hated yeah, it. I just. What you're describing, Jace, is more common than we'd like to think. It's my, I remember my stepdad's funeral, um, uh, as an, I was there as, I was there basically the only atheist in the room. My pastor brother was in charge of the, of the service. And it was, it was all about, you would have thought my dad, my stepdad, my dad was the most pious saint that had ever lived. And he hardly darkened the door of a church. He didn't read his Bible. He, he wasn't, this saintly he was a good man but he wasn't some super christian like it made my brother made it sound and it was all an opportunity with my mom right and so they just take these opportunities to proselytize and drive home their message one more time to a captive audience who are very very vulnerable at that time people are vulnerable at death just go ahead twist that knife yeah (laughs) And it's 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 really and maybe disgusting. we might get some more converts. Well, <laughs> it's disgusting that they take that opportunity to hammer people over the head with their hope is that they'll get some of the people to turn to God or to come to church or to become Christians. And there's no thought in at these services of remembering the dead person, remembering the person that's gone and memorializing them. It's just a sermon. It's another sermon. And it's disgusting. I remember being just absolutely just furious at my dad's uh, funeral. Um, But I had no control over it. And oftentimes that's the problem we find ourselves in. We just don't have any say-so in who does what. Now, if you... you My my main problem was um, that I... My mother did not have a will. And Mm. I was the next of kin. I'm her oldest son. So I did have control, but I was guilted into giving up control because of the wants of my family. Uh, And I have not forgiven them for this. And I'm still mad. And I haven't really told them the full extent of my anger yet. But I'm, I'm assuming that it will come someday. Yeah, I think it's fair to say, for you to do that at some point, to, to share with them your, your, your true thoughts about it. Because they put you in an impossible situation, um, and you acquiesced in order to make peace. 
with the family because oftentimes we do we capitulate to whoever's there that wants the faith in in the service you know we don't want to upset aunt susie who you know it's her mom who's going on to be with jesus and we don't want to upset that so we just give in to aunt susie because that's what she would have wanted and she would say well that's what your mom would have wanted all these things and so yeah there's a lot of guilting that goes on and it really is it's disgusting i don't know i don't know the answer honestly other than more of us getting to have more say in more of these kinds of services eventually that uh right will will. huh yeah that's true uh, write write a will. will come up with your will and then no no argument can be made because if your wishes are outlined in your will then then there's you can't argue with that legal document like, well, I can guarantee you there'll a, be it's one the of best mine. thing that I've, yeah, like it, it's the best thing that I've come up with. Like, but I can't, like, yeah. I can't go back in time and write, write my mom a will or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I can, I can move to the future. I can write my own. I can encourage people to write theirs because if they don't, then who knows what's going to happen at their funeral. Like, no, that's that's a great point, Jace. I, if you know those of us watching here. Make sure that you have that document in place, that your directives are given at your funeral and that no one is no one is allowed to usurp that. It's your life, it's your death, and you get to decide what, what that looks like. And you know, I, I know that that's what mine's gonna be. Um, and there'll be no deathbed conversion, by the way. Um, I'll make a video recording of that. <laughs> Well, I know you're mad about it, and you should be. It's just one of those mm-hmm. things. I mean, we only get one chance to memorialize our loved ones like that, and when it gets hijacked by religion, it's disgusting. And and um, we can the the only thing like we said, like you said, the only thing we can do is to put put measures in place that people can't do that at ours, and make sure yeah. your loved ones, if you can get, if you've got an older a, a parent or somebody that's getting closer to things, just talk to them about it and you say, Hey, have you got this plan in place? Do you know what's going to happen? And uh, if you'll write this out, we'll get it signed. And that way you're in a little bit, you're in control of that final moment, if you will. Right. Well, yeah, the, uh, the phrase ulterior motives comes to mind with, uh, with all of this like religious stuff within funerals, because it's, it really is. It just it's it's sickening how much how much there is and it's just layer after layer after layer it's like just a, a vile onion that surrounds all of this like because oh, yeah. you're gonna get guilted at the funeral parlor whenever you're picking out the casket or if you're gonna like or if you're gonna do a cremation or if you're gonna do something else you're guilted into getting like the biggest, latest, greatest, most expensive, whatever it is. And like, it's, it's all just, oh, it's so evil that money that. has permeated it as well as religion, as much as it has. Yeah. I've been to three different funeral homes with three different loved ones, friend, family, whatever, to help them piss, pick caskets out. And every single time they ended up buying more of a casket than they thought they would every single time (laughs) these folks are professionals trust me they know how to work they know how to tug the heartstrings they know how to work the emotions and and they know what they're doing it's carefully i mean the whole showroom is carefully planned and designed it's it's just it's disgusting wow i uh i've really found a lot of solace in uh uh the youtube channel ask a mortician uh, oh, yeah, because she's so great, and she exposes the funeral industry for what it is. She works at an ethical, uh, oh, like final wow. services place uh, in California. It's it's amazing. Like I, I love her channel. I cannot recommend it enough. What's it called? Uh, she talks about like why. Uh, ask a mortician. Okay. All one word. Everybody, everybody check that uh, out. That's, that's amazing. I love that. <laughs> yeah, she she had a video that was really great about why embalming is bullshit and why you don't need to do it, why gasketed caskets are bullshit, 
Like, <laughs> and it's just going to turn your loved one into a soup of black yuck. Like, <laughs> because all of their gases and everything is going to be Lovely. inside that gasketed casket Yeesh. and fermenting and pickling in it. Like, it's going to be gross. And if you just let them die and desiccate like like people had done for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, then it's way better. Like, mm. Wow. It's way better. It doesn't cost as much. Like, wow. That's embalming came about during, like, right after the Civil War. Huh. It was the, it's just the weirdest donate thing. Donate me to science. I don't care. That's <laughs> a lot that I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jace, thanks. We're gonna we're gonna head to super chats now, but I appreciate you calling in and getting. Uh, we I think we gave you a chance to vent on what you had to experience. I'm really sorry that you had to deal with that with your mom, but thanks for calling in tonight. Well, thank y'all so much for taking my call, and it's it was it was really great. And uh, uh, what's the name of that that fuck that runs this show? I think he should go Jimmy himself. <laughs> A lot of love for Jimmy. Thanks, Jace. Bye bye. Hi. And with that, Jimmy, take us to Super Chats. Jimmy, they they love you so much, Jimmy. Ah, where's Jimmy? (laughs) There we go. There you go. Go, you you lead us off, Stace. Sure. Um, twenty dollars from Rick Walker, my old boss. Had I know how it goes. Ah, thank you, Rick. But sorry. Sorry that you uh, had to deal with that. I don't know how close you were Mm -hmm. with your boss, but that sucks, man. Mm -hmm. But thank you for your support Mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah. Nineteen ninety nine from our buddy Greg Markowski. Thanks, Dave, for having apostasy as a guest. It makes it go from Super Tuesday to Super Duper Tuesday. (laughs) Love the line. Thanks, Jimmy Snow, for creating it. Thank you, Greg. We love the line, too. And, man, you got a fan mm-hmm. there, Stacey. Uh, Greg is the one that <laughs> me earlier today telling me how happy he was that you were on the show tonight. That's really nice. Thank you, Greg. By the way, everyone, get your Super Chats in now. The ch- show's not going for much longer. But if you don't, if we don't get enough, we actually have to sell the show to Charlie and Alexander, who tried to call back at the end of the show just moments ago. And I told the screener... <laughs> Nope, we're not extending the show for his pedet. That one of the worst young Earth creationist oh apologists gosh. I've ever engaged with, oh my God. and takes forever to go nowhere. Who um, is it? His name's Alexander. Stacey, you might remember him from the night I did the wow. Sometime Show preview. Oh the guy who took forever, okay. yeah, and was just yeah, awful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. anyway, we send in your super chats now. Otherwise, we got to sell the show to the two of them. Okay, we might let Alexander on in a future show. It's not at the end of Dying Out Loud. And apparently he was very peeved he wasn't let through. Oh, <gasps> poor thing. Yeah, hey, I we do remember him. him. Yeah. Oh, four ninety nine from Greg Markowski. Here's a donation in honor of Bevan's appearance. Yeah. <laughs> I nice. think she was here <laughs> adjusting everything for me. It was a mess. My mic, my yeah. monitor. Uh, thank you, Greg. Thank you, Bevan. And then- she stayed active in the chat after, so that was nice. Oh, did she? She usually does. She yeah. loves to be yeah. a part of it. 20, oh. I mean, uh, thirteen ninety nine dollars Canadian alleged dollars oh. from D. Your co-host is so pretty. I made her. <laughs> <laughs> you're That's welcome. my mom. <laughs> Wait, yeah. you're, you're artificial intelligence? What is going on here? Uh, <laughs> I made her. That's classic. Thanks, D. She Thanks likes to great, say it. Okay. Yeah. Well, she should be proud. Yeah. So pretty. <laughs> um, thanks for the great show, guys. Jimmy was on fire tonight, and it was awesome. Thanks, Dave, for giving people like Reagan a safe place to land. Oh, thank you, Dee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. I do value what we have here and, and the kinds of calls that we get that – are difficult sometimes and, and hard for people to navigate losses and loved ones and some of these things. It's just, I really appreciate you saying that D because I do feel like it's a safe place to land. Um, that they know they're going to have an ear that understands and that gets it. And that's, I find great value in that. So that's, mm-hmm. I'm really 
thankful Jimmy for giving me this this uh, platform here. It's been really great. Now, everyone, send in your super chat so that Dave can get a lawyer to sue me for making a hostile work environment by making jokes about his ALS. <laughs> oh, you're hearing from my lawyer. It's coming. Well, if, if they give enough money, <laughs> oh, that's you got right. to need... pay for the time. We need super chat so I can sue Jimmy. Come on, people. <laughs> <laughs> um, thirteen ninety nine Canadian from Pat McDonald. What's a twat waffle? Twat waffle? Dave and Stacy, I, Stacey, I feel a bit that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dave and Stacy, I feel a bit jealous of people who believe their dead loved ones are leaving dimes around the room. I'm stuck with missing my dear ma instead. Grief is hard. Mm. Yes, yeah. it is. I'm sorry, Pat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is hard, but it's better than believing in fairy tales. It's at least we're mm -hmm. dealing with reality. And yeah. I would, first of all, I'd be pissed if my dead relatives were just leaving a dime around. Come on, can you up the ante right? a little bit? A quarter, a dollar, Pat, anything? We're in Canada. A dime? Seriously? A what is this in the <laughs> 1700s? Uh, but yeah, grief is hard. And I think that's why we make up stories about the afterlife mm -hmm. and about religion to mitigate that mm -hmm. grief to make it to soften it to to soften the loss but making up shit doesn't make it true and it really doesn't no. help it doesn't help at all um so i would much rather deal with reality and any pain that accompanies that than to make up a story just to make myself feel better how about you stacy mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, same. And what, is, what is a twat waffle, by the way, Jimmy, since you threw that slur out? Well, twat, I think I, I, twat is a euphemism for a vagina. So I mostly like to use it to <laughs> emasculate men that annoy me. Uh, and then waffle, it's really just about how the sounds go together very well. Twat waffle, whatever it twat is, waffle. you'll want maple twat syrup, waffle. but you knew that because you're Canadian. So exactly. Well, I, well, we have. Well. We put maple syrup on everything. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. I think there's value in that. I put it in my coffee. I don't use sugar. I use maple syrup. Wait, what? Ooh. Yes. It's good. Nine ninety nine from Wanda Larson. I was a theist when my son passed away. His death was the catalyst for me becoming an atheist. I miss feeling that I will see him again, but I'm much happier living in reality versus a dream world. Carpe the fucking diem. Exactly, Wanda. That's exactly mm -hmm. what I was just saying. Were you reading my mind? Wow. No, I I think that, and again, I'm, first of all, I'm sorry for the loss of your son. That mm -hmm. There's nothing that I can imagine that's worse than that. And I really, I, I just, I know that's beyond difficult. But kudos to you for having the courage to dwell in reality and to not give in to the fairy tales that make you feel better. That's mm -hmm. just not helpful. So it, that's it. We just have to deal with the real world because it, it's the only thing that matters. And 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 yes, it makes the loss more acute. And but it mm -hmm. also helps you deal with it in a real way instead of some fairy tale that you can tell yourself. Anyway, yeah. I'm ranting. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Twenty dollars from Atlas Die. I absolutely love listening to the insulting banter between Dave and Jimmy. Carpe the fucking diem. Go Jimmy yourself. And I love it too. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I've heard the notes. I'm going to, I'm going to take the notes on board, Dave. From now on, I'm just going to treat you like your life is very sad. I'm going to do a oh. lot of low tone, but are you, but are you okay? I'm going to do a lot of that and treat no, you I'll, like. I'll, here's, how, here's how you need to do it. Here's how you do it. Let me just cue you up here. But how are you doing really, Dave? Really? How are hey, you Dave, doing? Dave, let me know for real. And that's the fun, yeah. the funniest thing about this is that's what I think these idiots have in their mind that the fantasy of that's mm -hmm. what I would be look like if I was a good friend. Meanwhile, yeah. I bet you Dave shares more with me than almost anybody he shares with for someone he's known such a short time because I've treated him like a human from the first fucking day, you dipshits. He's, he's treated me like shit from day one. Absolutely. Look at I that. I love him for that. No, I, Atlas. I, I, Hi, Atlas. I love you, girl. Good to see you here, and thank you for that. No, I, I don't know why people try to control the narrative about my life and my disease 
and my dying. I if I wasn't willing to talk about it, would I had a thing? Would I would I have a thing called dying out loud for fuck's sake? I, mean, I would just be crawling up in the corner. Yeah, look at the t-shirt. You're just too, so you're too thick and you're too weak to tell me how you really feel and how how mad at you are at me. Obviously, Dave, you can't stand up for yourself now. You have ALS. <sighs> My head's exploding on my T-shirt. How sensitive I am about this? I don't know. <laughs> no, no I, it, it, it's a it's a it's a terribly serious subject. But if you can't talk about it in real terms, if you can't laugh about things and just let life be life, and and not, <laughs> I have a good friend who's in a funeral director. Speaking of funerals today, uh, Greg. And he's he. We have this joke back and forth. Well, he'll do this soft funeral voice. Dave, how are you doing? Really? Are you okay? Can I get you? You know, that's an affected voice. That's not real. That's not a real mm -hmm. dialogue between two humans. That's something artificial. And so, anybody in the chat yeah. that wants Jimmy to be artificial to me, go fuck yourself. I want Jimmy to be real to me. <laughs> nah, sorry, Dave. Yeah. From now on. I'm only going to ask you how you're doing. And by the way, every conversation from now on, I'm going to bring up what an inspiration you are. That's going to make you. our friendship I, super good. Because I need that. I need that affirmation all the time. I, I mean, <laughs> you haven't told me in several weeks how inspirational I am. So I've been a little offended. I know. You're right. I I, I yeah. apologize. My bad. Yeah. yeah. I know that's what you want. That And by the yeah. way, Dave is dying out loud for the attention. Like, let's be real. That's what yeah. it is. So. I'll I'll go it's ahead really, and satiate that for him. It, it, yeah, it's, you blew my cover, Jimmy. Now they're not going to give us super chats. They're not going to support me on Patreon. It's all a ruse. You blew it, Jimmy. You blew it. I'm sorry. Damn it. This was our scheme. Ah, four ninety nine from John Doan, our buddy who sent us plants. Hey, John. Uh, hey, Dave and Stacy. I was just out with my plants. See, there's our guy. And I remembered the show was on. Love the show. I never believed in the desert murder manuals. Lucky me. Oh, you. Okay. It must have been an emoji or something. Yeah, I think something got lost in translation there. But thank you for your support, John. And once again, for the plants. They look great. I like <laughs> the uh, desert murder manuals to mean holy books. That's pretty funny. Ah, yeah. That's, that's pretty good. Really that's clever. Pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that. Okay. $10 from, is it B.W. Dingus? <laughs> Great show, Dave and Apostasy. Thanks to all. Thanks, you. Dingus. Bodingus. Bodingus. Okay. Is that how you say it? I was like, I don't know no. how to say it. I say all the things wrong every time. Don't go by me. Okay. Perfect. Dollars, euro. I'm Dollars, really euro. Good that's at a, saying that's things a new wrong. thing. That's going to. Dollars euro is going to catch on around the world. You guys watch. It's going to happen. It's going to be Somebody cool. send us some euros. I need to hear it tonight. We need somebody <laughs> from Europe to send us some money tonight. Four ninety nine from Claire. Can each of you please insult Jimmy? Love you all. Stacy, you go first. Get, rip it, man. Rip it, girl. Oh, rip I want it, this girl. so Come bad. On. Come on, girl. <laughs> You what should it. I say? I'm so not good at this. Okay, go fuck yourself, Jimmy. There, I said it. Oh my God, <laughs> you are so mean. Jimmy, just are you rolled okay? off the tongue. I don't feel like Jimmy? I deserved that. Jimmy, are you okay, buddy? <laughs> hey, Jimmy. I don't know, you man. Doing okay? I'm Jimmy? just sitting here Jimmy. trying to be an inspiration. Jimmy, you doing okay? <laughs> I don't know. Jimmy, Jimmy? I, I'm stay thinking of throwing me. away my shot. Stay with me, Jimmy. Stay, <laughs> stay with me. Stay with me, Jimmy. <laughs> I think I really hurt him. You can't hurt Jimmy. Okay, your turn. He's, your turn. I got, know. Oh, Jimmy, go fuck yourself. You drive me crazy. I cannot stand that whining voice of a thing you have coming out of your mouth. What the hell? See, How's and this that? is why we're friends, because everything he just said, I agree <laughs> with. We have so much in common, starting with our hatred of me. But then think about how I feel. I start... A, a network like this and I create a specific image. I tailor that image and Dave shows up with a beard like that. What the fuck? <laughs> What's wrong with my beard? I just, I just assumed I was supposed to insult back. <laughs> I was going to make a gay joke and I was going to say, now which thing is the beard? Am I referring to what's on his face or his co-host? But not oh, everyone geez. here knows what a beard is. A beard is... I don't think I do. I it's don't like a, think it's I like do. A, so it's like a fake girlfriend 
to I cover know. the uh, fact that you're gay. It's, it's full uh, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, so Stacy um, would be your beard. Yeah, Atlas saying oh. that she loved our banter. It, you would think Jimmy and I were high school buddies that we went to high school together or something, but we we've never even actually met in real life. I don't know if he even exists. You haven't? No, we have no, not. Never. Oh my god, I'm shocked. Okay. I, know, I don't right? leave my house. <laughs> when, he doesn't. When, when will we meet? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he just came over on one day. Or you would I would have to bang on his door and say, Jimmy, let me in. And I, okay, if he passed the airlock, I might let him in. I'm just going to have to remember. From, oh, go on. $5 oh. from Cluckenvar for the Sue Jimmy Fund. Here we go. We're off and running. I'm going to call a lawyer tonight. <laughs> Go Jimmy yourself, Jimmy, and carpe the fucking DM. Okay, I've got a lawyer on speed dial with that $5. By the way, in honor of the <laughs> first person who suggested that a host uh, uh, sue me, I just want to mention pubes. There was a person who who tried to uh, compel Ben to sue me for a hostile work environment oh, because right. Forrest and I made jokes about pubes oh, in front of him God. that he was laughing at. And this guy, like the person earlier, could tell on his face he was actually uncomfortable, but pretending to not be. Well, have those people go ahead and send them. Have them go ahead and send the money for the for the legal fees, and I'll just pocket it like the former guy does. So you know, yeah. go ahead and send that money yeah. if you think I'm I'm offended at Jimmy. Go ahead. Oh go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> Send us that Stacey. sweet Stacey. Sue cash. Okay. Four ninety nine again from John Doan. Okay, Jimmy, I am sending you an air hug. And of oh. course, to the host and the moderator's phone people, love you all. Atheist Punk 666 is a super fan. Bevan rocks too. Ah, uh, that's great. Yes. Little Bevan love that there. That is so nice. Thank you, John, again. Nine ninety nine mm -hmm. from Nuzzy D. I like saying that. Nuzzy D. <laughs> Sounds like a rapper's Stacey. name. Say it. Nuzzy say it, D. Ooh, look at it with the Nuzzy little, D. With a little attitude. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Thanks, Dave yeah. and Stacy. My biggest issue is processing grief from fems, friends and fam who took their own life. More questions, no answers, and only pain. Any thoughts would be appreciated. Jimmy, you're Jimmy's. That's a tough one, Nuzzy. That's, it does... Yeah. It does leave a lot of unanswered questions and mm -hmm. a big void. And I, I've not had close personal experience with that. I have friends who have, so I won't pretend to know what that's like. Um, but I've seen their anguish up close mm -hmm. and personal. And I just, it's got to be one of the toughest things to process. It really does. Um, the, the, the grief at a loss, any loss is, mm -hmm. is one thing, but when you add that element to it, it just adds layers that you don't really ever get answers for. So I don't, I don't know that I have any thoughts, um, any, uh, you know, suggestions on how mm -hmm. to do that other than just to acknowledge with you that it's just incredibly difficult. Yeah. I agree. I've, I've had someone take their own. Yeah. And it's, it's hard. So mm -hmm. just grief is hard in general. So. It is. Yeah. Um, I don't know who's turn it is. Okay. Uh, $10 from Katie Looney. Today has been four years since my dad passed suddenly from a heart attack. Though it has been so long, the show has helped me in the grief. Thank you, Dave, for all that you do. Uh, thanks, Katie. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you saying that. It means the world to me that this show helps in, in any way. And I'm very sorry for that loss. And I know it's still, you still feel that. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm really glad that we can help be in that space with you and for you. So thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. $5 from Senora, Senor Cinema. Senor Cinema. I'm fun with the words tonight. Thanks for taking my call earlier, Jack from Florida. Oh, thanks, Jack. Yes, thank yeah. you for calling. I appreciate any of you who call. We enjoy your conversations. We welcome whatever you bring to the table, and we're glad to be here for you and with mm -hmm. you. 
and we didn't get any dollars euro tonight. So next next week, <laughs> next week, folks, those of you who watch this later, I'm going to queue you up. We need some dollars euro in the super chat. We just need it for various reasons. I'll explain later. Sure do. Sure do. <laughs> That was sure I do. Such a sweetheart. I just love you. You're just so adorable. I, just, <laughs> I, I love, just love you having too. You on. I love having you on. And, and I love how Jimmy's just trying to corrupt you and make you say mean things. It's just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a super chat trying to make me say mean things. Uh, that was the best I could get. You. It's just not in you. And that's what I love about you is you're this sweet little atheist. I don't believe in God. <laughs> and, and, and the Christians want to make us all out to be angry and mean and roar. we just hate God and we hate everybody. And, and then along comes, <laughs> along comes Stacy. I'm not mean. I just don't believe in God. <laughs> that's right. I love it's it. True. I love it. It is true. But that's yeah. what makes you, just, and you and your mom both, you guys are just so sweet. And, and it's oh, hard thanks. for atheists. It's hard for atheists to look at that and, and, and see anything but sweet and kind people. It's just, it's just true. Okay, one more. You get to do this one. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Four ninety nine from Nuzzy D. Um, sorry for being a bummer. <laughs> Y'all should sue that I Jimmy guy for yeah. making he goes, Nuzzy huh? D. Nuzzy, Nuzzy D. D. <laughs> <laughs> That's me trying to be a gangster. Um, yeah. Y'all should sue that Jimmy guy for making y'all talk about tough things. Carpe oh, huh? I know. He's, yeah, the, he's so mean. What is that one? Carpe the... That must be a misprint. D. I pay the fucking oh, okay. DM. I pay the yeah. fucking DM. Oh, it just, I just looked at my keyboard. The C and the F are very close together. Yeah. Maybe it means carpe the cunty DM. I don't know, Jamie. <laughs> of course. Yeah, that's exactly what it meant. <laughs> Good. I'm just trying to come up with a way if to just replace Leave it with square Jimmy to take it down the road. Yep. Take it down a notch. Yep. Leave Pubes. It to Jimmy. Pubes. Here he is trying to make us talk about tough things again. Pew, pew. I know. Yep. It hurts my feelings. It hurts me. So was that, that part of the lawyer fund? I think so. So you'll hear so from my 10, lawyers soon. I've got 10 bucks. Nine ninety nine. I'm going to put them on retainer. And I think that's going to buy me 23 seconds of legal advice. Yeah. That's, I think uh, you're going to want to make it a quick, a quick brief. <laughs> help me, help me really Thanks. fast. Okay. <laughs> Thank you everybody who called in. Thank you for the uh, chat moderators for call screeners. Was it a Morgan tonight? I didn't look. Um, it was. And thank you, Morgan. And thank you, oh, Jimmy, Morgan. for producing. And there's our patron thank producers. You. Thank you for He's that too. support. And thank you, as always, for talking to you. See you guys tomorrow night on The Hang Up with Matt. What a great show between wrong mics and open mics. What a, That was one for the... Bye, everyone.